All right, guys. So uh, this is where we're gonna have the interview. I got some lighting set up. Look, when I, you know what I'm saying? Made it all professional because Zillow Nation is about that life. And uh, I'm gonna ask him a couple of questions. He's gonna tell me which ones he wants to answer. Because uh, I always believe you answer the questions. You know, you wanna answer? I don't ask questions that people don't wanna answer, you know? But this is some knowledge, man. And then um, next uh, month, I'm gonna have another one. Another interview with another breeder, but uh, this one's a Frenchy breeder, so we won't get it right. Hey guys, welcome to Zoom Nation. Like and subscribe. Did you know that. Manta! Manta! So we're here. We're not here, here, like meaning we're at this gas station out here. And, uh, you know, taking the family a break and stuff. Trying to uh, get this dog to pee. Yeah. Nico, come on. So yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? We on this journey to New Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. Squad shit, look. I'm a family man, bro. I do it right. I ain't none of these gangsters who want to be, man. I'm just a family man. I used to, but you grow, you know, and change. Hi guys, uh, I got here late, so that's my fault, uh, a lot of traffic, but this is where I'm at. I told you, I'm, I promised you I'm gonna come to a real kennel with real dogs and real dog men. This is a real dog man. Uh, you, wanna, you wanna talk, introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is James uh, Trujillo. Um, I run Los Lobos Kennels. Been doing it for about five years now. Okay, five years. Under that name. Oh, under the name, okay. Yeah. okay. And it's uh, located in New Mexico, so we're gonna um, we're gonna bring out we first gonna uh, bring out the two dogs he wants to just show. He'll talk about it and do that, and then after that we'll go back to where his main kennel is, and you see how he got the whole setup. You see he got the land. That's what I was talking about. You need the land. You need the space, and he separates his dog and be responsible. So you wanna show him your first dog? Sure. We got Nero here. He's uh, just coming up on three years old. He's coming up on three years old. He's uh, one of the main studs here at Los Lobos. He's um, a solid producer. I mean, he's a super producer. Everything he pushes out is uh, 100, 100 plus pounds, 120. He's like, what are you doing? He said he's three years old. And yeah. uh, where, so when, what, where does he come from? Like how, what, with the parents this, and all that? This guy comes from uh, Hova and Amber out of uh, Florida from MPK uh, Kennels. See that? Look at the head. Look at the structure. This boy is nice. That's where uh, Shark Bright's dad I was talking about is, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm going to get another one. He said he's going to do it again. And I'm going to yeah, just we'll wait for Yeah, we'll do a repeat and... Uh, Make sure you get that. that okay. Email. Okay. So let me bring another one out to you. Um, yes, sir. That's his son right there. It is cold. Oh, it is cold out here. You hear me? Oh. All right. So this is uh, Red. Redzilla. We call him Red. Uh, he's Nero's grandson. So this boy, he's um. He's about 11 months old. Beastie. He's a big boy. Super wide. And so, uh, who's the parents? Um, Roman 
Gladiator and uh, Cleo. Oh, Cleo is Nero's daughter. Okay. He kind of does look like his dad, just bigger. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, if anybody wanted to, to contact you too, where would how would they do that? Yeah, I'm on Facebook under uh, James Trujillo and Instagram. How would you uh, spell the last name? Uh, James and then Trujillo, T-R-U-J-I-L-L-O. Okay. We'll be opening up a, a Instagram page under Los Lobos. So, okay. Can I tag you on your regular page? So if they want to, okay. All right, so we're going to follow him now to the back. <laughs> Do you want to bring them out one by one? You want to just... Yeah, yeah, we'll bring them out. Uh... This is the mom for, uh, what's her name? Yeah, that's Shark the bike. So, uh, who's this? <laughs> he wants to play. So does your son like doing what you're doing? He does, he does. In fact, he runs uh, all the, the feeding program here. So you said your son runs what? My bad. Yeah, my, my son runs the, the feeding program here. So uh, everything you see as far as uh, size and all that, you know, as far as diet is concerned, it's all on him. So So what's your name, boy? Skinny, skinny, skinny dogs here. It's on be him. loud. Don't be nervous. You know, they're going to be coming to you when you take over. <laughs> so this who's is, this? This is Monster. Okay. This is uh, another big old white boy. He's a... Uh, a Batman son. Oh, you got him directly from Batman? Yeah, he's a direct Batman son. Uh, uh, Lona's the mom. I have her here. She's, she's a big girl. How, uh, how old is he? This guy right now, he's just turned about, I think, if I'm not, man, I don't want to be wrong here. So he just turned uh, 12 months right now. Oh, so 12 he, months? He just, yeah, he just hit a year. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, do you plan on doing anything with him anytime Definitely. soon? We just did a breeding with him and uh, pushed out three, four tries. Yeah? Yeah, but uh, we just had three, three died. There were uh, two stillborns and I had, uh, so we got two. Yeah, two and remember, I told you, you could buy these dogs or breed. You got to always be ready for the losses. Everybody thinks, you know, it's just buy a dog and everything works out. It, it comes with good, comes with the bad. Definitely. So if you had puppies, this is where you would keep them, right? Yeah. Yeah, we transfer, transfer all our little pups over here after about... 10 weeks. Um, this is Rena. The reason I'm even showing Rena is because uh, she's up for sale, guys. Rena's for sale. She's, uh, she's also a super producer. Um, every time I breed her, she puts out 10, 13 pups, um, and they're all 100 pound plus males. Okay, and uh, what's this? Do you have any of her pups here? I do. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll bring out one right now. Okay. See how he has the little uh, kennels? That's what I was like, this is where I'm trying to get. I'm not trying to do too much until I get to this level right here. Do you, uh, do you, uh, do you uh, crop all your dogs or no? I do, all of okay. them. Okay, okay. Is there a reason on you, for you? I just like the look. I definitely go for the look, but you know, there's other little uh, uh, medical, no, no, no. There's some uh, other reasons, like ear infections, no. stuff like that. It prevents wax buildup. Uh, so this. Can you repeat that again? Repeat so they understand. Yeah, uh, it prevents wax buildup. Um, you know, ear infections, stuff like that. So there's also uh, medical findings that we crop their ears, other than oh, looks. No. But I, I, I go for the look. So this is. Uh, uh, I just showed her mom. Yeah. No. I just showed her mom. So this girl here is a year and let me see here, a year and two months. Uh, her name is Tara. She's also for sale. Okay. A, uh, well, you know what? I think 
if we if I don't change my mind within the next week and a half, she'll be bred. Okay. Because she just came in the heat, so. Okay. Okay. Oh. Is that how tall my dog that I got is gonna get? I think uh, a little bit taller. A little taller? Yeah. Oh, that's perfect then. Man. Yeah, so I'm gonna let him bring them all one by one, and then when he's done, I'm gonna just go in the kennel, and then you guys. This is uh, another tier female. Okay. So this girl is well built, good structure, wide chest. See that chest? The wide legs too. And they and they straight too. Straight, clean feet, no easty westy. <laughs> I just learned about that really. You I do. swear I've been doing this for years and like I just learned. It's crazy, like you just keep learning. There's a lot of that easty westy floating around. Man, look at her, bro. She's this is why I had to come back and grab the uh, the sister, cause man, when you put right yep, there. when you put Thanos with this, oh yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be nice. That's where you get foundation from. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, and you said you're not selling her, right? No. Oh. Okay, I'm lost. And I'm tired, man. Oh yeah. yeah. Any kind of drive like that gets me. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, I have to do it. Because if not, I would have to come like a week and a half later, and I'm like, oh. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Man, man, I'm in love with this dude, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, goodness. Look at this beast, bro. This is his sister. That's his sister. Okay, that's his sister. So this is Coco. That's a monster. See how it looks like a dude dog? Some, some males you guys got don't even get like this. That's why I be telling people papers, genetics. Go to somebody who's been doing it. You know what I mean? So what's her name? Her name's Coco. Coco. And yeah, how old is also, she? She's also a year, uh, a year old, 12 a year months. Old. Uh, oh, she's okay. She's going to be a monster. She'll, uh, she'll hit 130. Yeah, and she's already big she like is. for for that for that she's age. She's 100 man. pounds for sure. <laughs> and who's this over here? This is a, a tank daughter. Oh yeah? Yeah. She's That's big. Tank daughter. She's big. And uh, tall too. I don't see her. Where did she go? She's probably in that house. She's no, no, she's okay. over there. Oh yeah, there she is. <laughs> she, uh, she, uh, one of her legs is messed up. Yeah. Yeah. It happens, yeah, but that's a... <laughs> you see how you can tell that he messes with him because she's following him. He's the boss around yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. He, he spends most of the time out here. I should tell my son he needs to take notes. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and you know what? He just, my son, both of them, uh, my older son was working here at this kennel and he bought himself a nice dirt bike. Yeah. And now my son bought him a four wheeler. Oh, nice. So, so oh, so you compensate? Oh, definitely. Yeah. You see yeah. that? Just, He's uh, teaching his kids. Showing man. young boys to be men. Yeah. That's why I be trying to tell him too. Like this is family stuff. It's not just. Oh, no. So who's this? This is Leona. She's a uh, red sister. Okay. The one we brought out earlier. How old is she? Yes, guys. She's uh, 12 months old. Also. Uh, like she's a beast. This is what you call a she-male 100 <laughs> percent Yeah, you feel me? That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna put his uh uh Instagram and Facebook on the video on my YouTube. And then when you guys are ready, you can get look at the muscle on her back, bro. Like she just uh also came in uh, today. Oh, are you so gonna are you doing Bumps anything? I'll be coming out of her in uh in about 70 days. Who are you breeding so, her to? Probably gonna breed her to, to Nero or to Monster right here. Okay. Okay, so you remember the first dog you pulled out? He's gonna breed it to that one or he's gonna breed it to the Savage right here, man. Look at that dome. Look at this dome's oh, yeah, bigger than yeah. mine, bro. This guy's 135 pounds. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. No, no here's. Oh, you do it. What'd you do? You read you so fast. 
see that tank, you know? She's just too much. And even though her leg, she's on it. She doesn't care. She's yeah. just... She's in heat too. <laughs> so Damn. So like, let me ask you something. Do they, like when one comes in heat, do, is it like a trigger? Do they, do it, they all? It, it, it does, they follow each other. It seems like it's uh, one of those uh, group kind of things. Yeah. Uh, in fact, what I do when I want a female that I've, I've been really wanting to come into heat and I have two other females that are in heat, I put two females, one on each side and put the one that I want in heat right in the center, in the center kennel. And, and it seems like the other two bring her into heat. Nice. Maybe it's all in my head, but. <laughs> hey, you've been doing ain't. this, yeah. yeah. Let's fix it, Chad. What do you want out next? Um, who's out there? The chocolate and Chiba. And yeah, bring the chocolate, I guess. You resting? You had puppies? You resting? <laughs> <laughs> you see that she was like yup yeah she's it's like a cold red saying. daughter so she's a her daddy's a huge guy i used to own code red yeah just not a, a good kennel dog yeah wow. <laughs> <laughs> see i see the honesty too yeah, yeah, honesty yeah. is what really in the game oh man oh i love this one so this is um this is a big baller dog from Big Baller Kennels out of New York. Big Baller Kennels out of New York. The, and her name? Uh, Chocolate Princess. Chocolate Princess. And how old is she? She's uh, 15 months. 15. Damn, these all your females are still pretty young, bro. They are. Damn. Imagine, bro, guys, Im, like a dog, imagine at three to four years where this dog is going to be. They you know what I mean? At yeah. Years old. Uh, what I do is I. I um, it's a replacement thing. Uh, you keep turning over. Uh, once you have a litter that you know is just special, like right now, I try not to do any breedings unless I know it's special. If it's not, I just ain't gonna do it. So anytime you buy something for me, in my heart, I believe it's a home run hitter. Uh, they're gonna be a heavy hitter, just a big, huge, good, or what you're looking for. Some of my dogs are gonna be short, stocky, and wide. Some are gonna be a little taller, but they're always gonna be stocky and wide. And um, so what, I, what, what I'm getting at is, I ain't gonna ever push a dog, or I never, a dog ain't never gonna leave this yard unless I believe that dog is good enough for me to keep. So, um, it's all, so what I do is, when I do a breeding, I believe it's a, it's a home run hitter, so I keep me a female out of it. And then later on, when mom gets old, I send her off to a retirement home that I have a guy that takes some of my dogs, two of them, uh, and they go to, to a ranch and they, they, I retire them there. But anyways, uh, I always keep me a female. So it's just always about improving your breedings, improving your product and keeping that flow going okay so you just keep producing better and better and better okay can i walk in there Definitely. i just want to show them like you see a responsible breeder has the dog separate if you get got you see how much space they're in there clean you see everybody's chilling nobody's going crazy i'm in here and they're not even barking you know what i mean like clean look it's clean on the floor and it's all set up nice and that's why i was saying that this is where I'm trying to get. This is where I'm trying to get. Everybody situated right. And we got, we got, you know, it's always a, a work in progress. So we got lighting going in here. Uh, we got that whole back end. Uh, oh, that's your land too? Yeah, yeah. And then we got more, uh, we're going to build the back end on that end though. See, it's all, if you want to do the dog, then you got to have land, bro. Are you a biker? Oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> Look at you got all the bikes too. You got all the bikes. Once again, your name, sir? James Trujillo, Los Lobos Kennels. And like you said, you said the name is five years, but he's been how long? You've been doing it oh, all together? I've been doing it till, since I was sixteen years old. And how old are you now? Fifty. See, get it from somebody who's been doing it. So, um, introduce yourself. Um, what do you do? Yeah, my name is James Trujillo. I um. I'm the owner and uh, creator of Los Lobos uh, Bully Kennel here in New Mexico. So, um, how did you come up with the name of your program? Actually, um, Los Lobos was, uh, it's 
the name of our football team. We don't have a call. We don't have no pro. Uh, no pro team, so we got a. Uh, it's all college ball. <laughs> so it's uh, Los Lobos uh, is our basketball football team. So I kind of took it from my state, oh, and uh, so you're representing. Representing. So uh, how long uh, have you been doing this, and is it more of a career thing or a hobby or a way of life? What What is it all to you? Um, been doing it. Been doing it since I was 16. Um, I took a, a, you know, some time off there for a little bit, and uh, I went to Rottweilers actually for a little while. Came back to the Bullies, uh, started back up with the Reds. Um, definitely a lifestyle. Um, of course, you know, you want to make some money. That way, it helps pay for what you do. You know, and it's actually, it's it's cool having a little money plus having some cool dogs. You know. Okay. Okay. How much work do you need to put in to be successful in this? And what is success? Is it the money? Is it the dog for you? Because I know everybody's different. Yes. Um, work, it's, it's what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. So you don't put all you got into it. That's what you're going to get out of it. So if you put all you got into it, that's what you're going to get. Something great, you know, something good and success I measure it by not money um, of course there's money's always a factor it's it's always gonna play a factor in everything you do so but it's it's definitely the creation um, having a vision and getting there I told you it's an obsession I told you. so uh, what are the uh, pros and cons of being a dog man pros are always um, kind of runs along the lines of, of uh, having something that you love doing and like just having a you know creating the baddest dog you can uh, cons are always the the critiques that you get from other breeders the hate uh, and how do you deal with it you know what I just stay in my own lane and just keep moving you know all the haters the other day I just put a post uh, I posted up something on uh, on Instagram uh, looking for more haters because all my haters are turning into fans <laughs> uh so uh did you like the new guys that i uh i'm around they they're more into reading books and research and all that and then someone like you are you more reading books hands-on like so how did the knowledge come and how do you balance it all you know what i've done some reading i think it's essential um but for the most part on in, in my case it's been hands-on trial and error um just having that vision and uh where, where the reading part comes in as far as i'm concerned is is reading the the backgrounds of of the the lineage uh backgrounds of the mom the grandfathers the fathers uh stuff like that but other than that i'm not into the whole books kind of thing i'm just a hands-on kind of guy what is the end goal of your program? You know what? I, um, I ask myself that all the time. Um, and I really don't have a solid answer on that because um, my end goal was creating something that was, um, in my eyes, just, uh, you know, something that I've already gotten there. I've already created what I, what I thought was the end goal. So it's, it's, so it's kind of it like, it's kind of tough saying what the end goal is. Oh, so you just keep going. You just keep moving. You just keep on <laughs> trucking, and you start um, you, you start seeing other things that other people are doing, and you're like, man, I want to get a little bit of that, a little bit of this, and you know, and create something even better. So, anyways, so uh, what is the best way to find the foundation dog? Like, what what determines is do you go to like meaning do you go get some people want to get a famous dog uh some breeders are more like i'm just gonna get a dog and then get there later so so what what is the best way for you that you've learned of all these years with the found finding the foundation dog definitely um going through all the steps um finding that 
that female or getting and breeding, you know, either finding the female or male that you want to use to create something, you know, end result. But there's no quick, uh, no uh, get there quick schemes. There's no going out there and buying the big baddest dog and the big baddest male, big baddest female, and just start producing and and get get all the customers and the whole you know yeah that it just doesn't work that way. You got to put your the the work in and uh, just putting that work in, man. Okay, okay. What gender do you think plays the biggest part in the direction of your program? In the direction of my program? Yep. And uh, yeah. and two, um, how do you determine with first pick, second pick? Because some like want them tall, some mm. want them short. Some, so when you get them, do you... Because I know you have everything. So yeah. like when you... So how do you determine like, okay, this is what I'm going for. This is... You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. how... I'm sorry. I'm disturbed. How long do you wait till you choose that first? Because there are some people who have... A puppy and they're three days old and like oh this is the best and you know whoop whoop we'll put in deposit like mm -hmm. do you are you fast or do you wait till a certain time usually when i have a litter um looking at them pups for like you know day one day two day three i can get an idea as to what's gonna be what um but i love to wait and choose um the best time for me is Right around eight to ten weeks. Eight to ten weeks. Yeah, but even if I could buy some more time, I I, I do that. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess since you already uh, said uh, your son feeds your dog, I guess this is more of his question, but you can answer him because it's your son. Mm -hmm. What do you feed your dogs? Like, are you raw? Are you more just kibble? What 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 do you feed your dogs? Definitely raw is in my program. Um, we probably do forty sixty. So we're doing 60% uh, raw, 40% kibble. Um, due to the fact that, in my my opinion, um, the kibble, it, it carries different nutrients that, that raw just isn't gonna carry. So um, <clears throat> find a good kibble that works for you and, and your dogs, of course. And um, definitely raw, raw is the way to go. And then uh, is it expensive? No, actually I've saved money saving uh, going raw. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can feed versus um, some dog foods going $1.50 a pound, $2 a pound versus 50 cents a pound going raw. Yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, do you, are you more of, when I tell the people on the YouTube channel and everywhere I go, I'm like, I'm more like, no matter what you feed your dog, I say it's genetics papers. Like, that's why I'm here. I look at your dog, you, you be communicating, you do all that. But, you know, some some people think like they supplements or even feeding raw like how much do you think the feeding raw the supplements you know like bully max and all that plays a part in your dog's development it definitely plays a part but it's it's all genetics i mean you can get you something that's that's just not good genetically and feed it nothing but the best and just all steaks all whatever and it's just it's just not gonna be what it what you think it's gonna be or what you hope it's gonna be. It all falls back on genetics. You can get a and also you can get a. I know a guy that has a a couple monsters at home and he's just feeding uh, Costco kibble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do you uh, get involved with other kennels? You know what I have. I've actually even uh, partnered, up, partnered up with other kennels. And um, end result, best thing to do is stay, you know, stay on your own, do your own thing. Because there's always gonna be conflict. Um, there's a vision and we always can't share the exact same, two people aren't gonna sing, uh, share the exact same vision. So the best thing to do is just do your own thing, stay in your own lane. Um, if you can find somebody that's been in the game for years that can give you the some some you know advice and and, and just even take you as an understudy and uh, teach you some of the ways and, and you know some of his knowledge, that's that's like golden. Okay. Okay. Do you keep up with uh, people who buy dogs from you? With my customers? Yes. Definitely. Um, every customer that can. That is willing to carry on a, a relationship with me 
after the purchase of one of my dogs, I'm definitely open to that. Um, it plays a big part as far as, you know, it's always, I'm, I'm one of those uh, relationship type people that likes to talk and, and just trade ideas or whatever and, and just also get to see and know what my my uh, production is, is looking like and what I can improve in and things like that. So definitely try and keep in touch with everybody that I uh, that I sell a dog to, it, although it doesn't always happen. So uh, do you need to be a people's person? Like what, did you, what have you learned dealing with people and you know like customers like but what like do you have to be a people's person to do this or can it be strictly business you know what I've uh, I'm a people's person to begin with so that just comes with my part with my you know you deal with me that you're gonna you're gonna deal with a people person that just likes to talk not because I'm trying to get up on somebody or or the, you get more flies with honey than vinegar it's, that's just not my role uh, or my game, but um, it's definitely to me. I think you, as long as you're producing the best, I don't think it matters what your uh, personal personality is about. Um, if you're producing what everybody wants, they're gonna come and buy it, whether you're an, an asshole or not. <laughs> true, true. Can you get rich off this? And are you trying to get rich or are you just doing it just to do it? Um, I'm doing it. Uh, if the richness was to come, i definitely open arms to it. Um, can you get rich? Definitely. I believe it's all in marketing, how you market yourself, your, your kennel, your label, your dogs. And you got to find that sweet spot that works for everybody. Just like, uh, you know, I don't really look up to the guy or his dogs, but uh, um, the owner of Hulk. Yeah. That guy just, he, you know, he's a marketer. He's, that's just what he does. And I, I think he can market anything and he's going to sell it. Doesn't got to be dogs. He got the gift of gab. He does. Okay. And so that's what's carried him this, you know, a long ways. Okay. Or the whole ways. So, with saying that, would you say he's more of a, if you would say music-wise, he's more of the famous guy, and are you more of the underground dude that nobody knows, but you've been doing it? Because you just said you've been doing it since you were 16. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I heard of you from word of mouth. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not one of those guys that's pushing my dogs out there. Um to be honest with you, my dogs, I look at all the ones that I have and I, that I kept, I, I, you know, consider them all kind of family-ish. So I'm not just pushing them out like I'm a pimp, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just don't believe in that. So my dogs will gain their recognition as I produce and it's word of mouth as they get out there. Best advertisement is word of mouth anyways. Okay. So um, eventually, end result, um, I do believe I'll have... It all depends on what fortune, what everybody considers fortune, but I'll, I'll, I'll be living where, how I want to live. But I, I'm already doing that, so. Yeah, you got land, no, man. You yeah. blessed. Yeah. You blessed. So, um, knowing everything you know now, would you have done anything different through your journey till now as a dog man? Um, you know, all dog guys, we have an ego. Um, we always think our dogs are the baddest. Um, you know, everybody's is, you know, second best to yours. Um, so it's kind of hard to answer that question. But honestly, yes, I would do something different. And it was, um, it would be uh, following some advice that some old schooler guys had given me that I'm, that I'm taking now. I'm, I'm actually implying it now. And so now that I'm implying it, I'm, I'm seeing results. The results that I would have seen 10 years ago. Um, so definitely that. So is it, but though, since you have your son, you could pass that down, Oh, right? definitely. Already passing it down. Okay. That guy knows a lot. <laughs> That's where I'm trying to give my son. Like when you see your dogs came out, he wasn't afraid. Yes, he just yes. touched them and That's he was what it's pulling about. them out. You know, I, I get customers here all the time that, that bring their kids and they're just 
Sometimes they're just crying outside the gate. Yeah. Dude, I you was know? scared of your dogs. Too. I mean, I've been here before, but too, I'm still. Yeah, but yeah. when I saw my son, I was like, okay, that's, you know, that's the part I like when you see those results and you didn't oh, plan definitely. on it. So you're just like, yeah. Yeah. And that those things you just can't, um, it's, it's, it's like, they all learn that right at home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because even when we got here, he was just, he, he just claimed the he dog. Just, he was yeah. like, that's my dog. I was yep. like, okay. <laughs> um, if you had to, say something that nobody in the game will I'm trying to tell people out there about the dog game what would it be I just I don't have an answer to that one okay 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 well guys uh, we came we saw I got my puppy uh, I'm gonna take a couple of pictures of the dogs take a pictures of my man's and uh, I'll see you later, but I'll put his YouTube, I'll put his uh, uh, Instagram, and whatever other stuff he wants me to put on there. And you can contact him if you have questions and stuff. No trolls, please. You know we hate trolls. Thank you.